Hey guys, so I'm coming up here making another video and um, I normally don't talk about topics like this. This isn't really my forte. Um, I'm not really that interested in it, but I saw this and I was interested in this headline and it says despite deep discounts, H&M can't get people to buy its clothes. So the first thing that I saw was, or the first thing I thought about when I saw this was who are the people? I had an idea, but I wasn't for sure. So when I clicked on the picture and the article and I, and I blew up the picture, I, it sealed the deal for me. I knew exactly who they were talking about um, because this woman here is of a European bloodline, maybe say Spanish or whatnot, um, but she's definitely a European. Um, and then you have this Israelite woman here, this black woman here. Um, and we all know that they don't highlight us at all if, uh, and, and on a main scale at all, unless it's something like this over here, unfortunately. Or, you know, they're trying to manipulate us to purchase from them or sustain them some way financially. Other than that, they don't give two cares about us. Um, so anyway, the article, just to get through this quickly, the article is talking about how H&M has about $4 billion of extra merchandise that they're trying to sell off, which is horrible. I mean, that's, that's scary. Um, and then they have like stuff from old Halloween and Christmas costumes and sweaters and stuff they're trying to get rid of. Um, they should just throw that trash out anyway. But, um, you know, so I, I've worked and I came from corporate retail, I worked in e -com, and I've been there when you've had these types of situations. Um, my company that I used to work for was probably not a, a um, competitor for H&M because the age bracket for the consumer was different. But um, I still I definitely been there, you know, with you know, where they were trying to figure out, okay, we've got all this stuff that we need to sell and we're not selling, you know? And so I've, I've been present for the, and, and around those kinds of conversations where they're trying to figure out how to paddle up, up Creek in a boat without an oar. Thankfully I jumped off that ship a long time ago, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Maybe they turned things around. I don't know. I haven't even cared to look into that, but anyway, back to the article, it says here that they are trying to um, come up with some factors, some ideas of what the issue would be. And they're putting on millennials. It's saying millennials are growing up and more interested in buying well-made clothes. Uh, millennials are looking for quality over quantity. You know, they're not interested in buying cheap items anymore. Um, and that may be true, you know. But at the same time, I feel like even if the millennials are growing up, there's always still somebody underneath them coming right behind them, ready to take their place. So... To me, H&M's clothes fits more of like a teenage, um, young 20-something, early 20-something year old teenager. So the millennials are now in their 30s now. So even if we're not buying anymore, you still have a customer to appeal to. So that to me doesn't seem to be the problem. Um, but anyway, that's just my logic. But then we get to this. The recent backlash over an H&M ad showing a black child wearing a coolest monkey in the jungle sweatshirt could also have hurt sales. And I love the way they said, could also have. <laughs> Maybe, we're not sure, possibly. Like, seriously? Okay, anyway. Then he wanted to say they were with widespread calls for customer boycotts after the January incident. Musicians, um, The Weeknd and g Easy, both of whom had partnerships with the retailer, announced they would cut ties with the company. Um, whether it's whether an oblivious oversight or not, it's truly sad and disturbing that in 2018, something so racially and culturally insensitive could pass by the eyes of so many um, and be deemed acceptable. G Easy wrote on his Instagram, "I can't allow for my name and brand to be associated with a company that could let this happen." Uh, goes on to say, H and M has since apologized for the ad, but some in the industry say the company could feel far-reaching effects. You think? Like, meaning this is going to go on for a while, for a minute. I don't even know if they would ever really recover from this. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and it says there was a huge backlash, particularly in places like South Africa, that could have left some customers saying, you know what, I wasn't that loyal to H&M anyway. Maybe I'll shop somewhere else. Um, and I find it interesting that they pointed out specifically South Africa, um, but not the UK where the incident took place. Um, now, I know the, the when it happened, the mother and the father came out supporting that foolishness like a fool, but, um, you know, to each his own. So um, I think that's interesting that they point out South Africa and then they say that could have left some customers saying the fact that you highlighted 
South Africa means that you know that there was an uproar down there about the, that incident so great and large in South Africa that it wasn't just mm, could have left some customers saying, no, they actually did say that. And I find it interesting how they're just trying to play it off and play it up to, you know, maybe that's the problem. <sighs> Come on, y'all. Y- y'all don't want to admit to the fact that, you know, you survived because of the dollars that you've taken out of black people's hands, out of little black hands. I don't know. Anyway, keeping it moving. I I didn't really know that a lot of black people shopped at H M that much. I mean, I knew they shopped there, but I didn't know that I thought they more had, had more of a customer, uh, white customer base. Apparently not. Okay, because H M is over here crying little tears about us not shopping there anymore, and they're appealing to us and they're trying to manipulate the masses to say, "Hey guys, come back. You know, we got we got things that we're looking to sell to you. Come back and buy our stuff." I'm not interested in shopping in these places anymore simply because since coming into the knowledge of my Israelite heritage, I'm not interested in buying the clothes of the heathen that does not align up with um, the look and the order that the Most High gave us to wear and dress. And that's not to say I have fringes on every single garment that I have here. Absolutely not. But um, I'm not interested in buying and, and adding to my what I do have here clothes that um, are not what I'm supposed to be supposed to be wearing that's not of my culture that doesn't represent and show my culture as a black woman in america we i grew up in america for 30 years and never knew a doggone thing about my culture and who i was so now that i know are you serious you think i'm going to trade that back in for some little cheap h&m clothes that was made overseas for 10 cents you're an idiot but um the thing is that i find interesting is that black people we have such a huge buying power not just in America, but in the world altogether, because H and M they had their little issue with um you know the black kid you know not buying you know with the black kid whatever and you know another thing that's interesting is that they had a white kid well okay maybe not I was gonna say they had the white kid that had um something else on his shirt but I think it was something positive for white people so maybe that's why uh, white folk didn't pull out but anyway back to what I was saying H and M is feeling the the effects of black people. Um, not wanting to put their dollars into something, which is not something that's new, you know, because we can decide where we want to shop at. And if we decide we don't want to, it's a huge problem for people. If we, if we decide we don't want to buy products anymore, it's a huge problem. If you think about the hair care line industry about five, 10 years ago when black people were going natural, you know, we never saw coconut oil and Moroccan oil, Moroccan oil, argan oil and nothing. Fast forward to now, the so-called age of natural hair, white folk putting coconut oil and shea butter and everything. So it's like you can see that we really are the backbone of the economy. Without our dollars to support them, they have no cushion. This just goes to show the same thing here, the movie Black Panther. They reached a billion dollars. And you know that did not come from the hands of anybody but us. Um, yes, there were nine black people that went to see the movie. There were some in the theater with me when I saw it. Um, but overall, it was us that gave them that billion dollars. Um, now, you know, people are going to have their opinion about the movie and, you know, the witchcraft and stuff in it. And, you know, the fact that this money's going to the white man. And I get all that. And I understand that. But let's be real. There's nothing in today's society in the time of the Gentiles that we can do. Um, as far as if, if, if you're going to work for money, you might. Yeah, I know you're going to want to spend it. So there's no really it's not many places that you can go or things that you can do where you're going to spend that dollar and then not go to the hands of a, of a black of a white person okay and you can choose these types of things yes but at the same time you know you're still in the system where the time of the gentiles the white man is running things or ruling or, or has his hand a way above yours at this point so i just like to eat the meat and spit out the bones um you know there were some things in the movie i didn't really care for like the ancestors and stuff like that and you know some you know the the witchcraft type um, things they were showing, but it didn't shock me because I mean I got people probably in my family still doing that stuff today. That's nothing new. Israelites had their hand in witchcraft for as long as I can remember, back during King Solomon's kind of time. You know what I'm saying? So King Saul, even before then, you know what I'm saying? So that's nothing new. But and I respect everybody's decision and opinion about stuff. But for me, I enjoyed the movie. Um, but my point is is that. Black people, you know, we have a huge buying power and they know it and they're feeling it. And I love the fact that we are deciding to pull out. And I want us to realize the power that we have even more and pull out, not because we're offended, but pull out because we're going back to Torah. We're going back to the way of doing things the way the most I created for us and our people, our community. But um, 
Anyways, I just wanted to share that and I hope that was interesting to someone. Shalom.